Today on Wardens, we find ourselves behind a locked gate looking for clues in a suspected illegally killed elk in Region 2. We'll follow the trail. Wardens in Region 7 come across a boatload of game birds left for waste and discover a mysterious headless deer during the investigation. Later, we tag along with a warden who trades his duty pistol in for a hunting rifle and takes to the field on a hunt of a lifetime for trophy mule deer in western Montana. Region 2 Warden Lou Royce works in Darby, Montana, which is arguably the state's best hunting units for trophy mule deer. Administrative duties generally keep a warden captain confined to an office. Today, Jeff Dara is in the field and has just rolled up on a non-resident vehicle. He left his keys in his truck. He must be close by. <laughs> you would think. Oh, we got some tracks, don't we? Yeah, it looks like a, a woman. The disappointing part about being in Montana was a law enforcement officer. We got these big things in our way called mountains. And from time to time, you can't get out with a radio or a cell phone. Now this vehicle looks really suspicious uh, for a lot of reasons. FT24, FT21. <laughs> Hey, I got a question for you. Can you copy? Yeah, I said more, go ahead. The uh, area is very, very, very limited to cow elk being harvested. We did check some other hunters down below that said that uh, some hunters were leaving this rig to go pack out a cow elk. Hey, I'm up here, uh, come up the Moonshine Road, and there's a truck here from North Dakota. They're supposedly packing out a cow elk. Um, I'm reading the regulations. I'm not seeing where uh, there are very many permits. Uh, explain to me what you think, what, what's the cow season here? Uh, the only way it'd be legal is if uh, they have a permit to hunt in the vehicle. Uh, so if it's a youth hunter, 12 to 15, or there are a few permits, but there's, uh, I mean, there's like a total in 270 of like 20 permits or something like that. Yeah, 10-4. It's kind of a weird deal to truck sitting right here, tailgates down, toppers open, windows are open, keys are in the ignition, um, but nobody around. But we did talk to a very reliable source coming down the hill that said these two guys killed a cow last night and they were packing in to get it out today. Oh yeah, 10-4. Yeah, they, hopefully one's a kid. If, if not, they're, uh, they got an issue. Yeah, 10-4. The inside of the rig, kind of just from my experience to have some things in there that make a guy think that uh, there could be some things wrong here. The only, about the only thing it could be would be a would be a juvenile hunter and uh, I don't know if that's the particular case here. It doesn't really look like that. I'm gonna run the plate <coughs> and see what we got. As you can see there's a game cart track right there. And there's a track right there that don't belong to me. Here's mine. So you can tell it's a, a, a female. Either that or it's a guy wearing pointy shoes <laughs> with awful little feet. Huh. 750 miles to the eastern region 7 near Glendive, Montana, Warden Steve Marks is investigating a large quantity of pheasant and other game birds left to waste. Hey Justin, this is Game Warden Steve Marks from here in town. How are you doing? Say, um, 
I had a call from a fella that was up to the college here a few days ago, and apparently there's, or he called about a bunch of breasted out pheasants that are laying right there in the by the dorm parking lot, you know, along Taylor Avenue in that in that deep gully, that ditch right there. And anyways, I went up there and looked, and I mean, there is a pile of birds laying there. And some of the birds are, are still whole. This bird here is completely whole. When we return, and this case takes an interesting turn. Okay. And I mean, and I mean, you're, you're being real good and being honest with me about that, but there was something else that came up regarding deer hunting last year. Sparsely populated eastern Montana doesn't mean lawbreakers are less likely to get caught. Law-abiding citizens are a tremendous asset to law enforcement and provide additional eyes and ears in the field. Warden Steve Marks received a tip that someone had thrown a large quantity of game birds over a bank at the local college in Glendive, Montana. Warden Todd Enders will be assisting on this investigation. And they both had the non-resident college student big game combos last year. Okay. And I'm hearing that <laughs> shot a whitetail buck and all that was ever seen was the head. This <laughs> supposedly I had a father that come up and I find it <laughs> it's out of the same town in Utah, this Bingham City. So that appears to be him. And he bought a license, bird license, on October 12th. Okay, okay. I know there's morning doves. There's some other kind of bird. I wasn't even sure what it was, but I didn't look at it that long. Um, there's some sharp tails. There's some whole pheasants. There's breasted pheasants. And I mean, there's a lot of birds. So I figured we start with these two guys, try and get them to admit that, you know, get that the dad was here with this other fellow. Um, figure out who else is hunting with them, who else is involved in throwing these birds down there. Marks calls the college for permission to retrieve the birds as evidence. He grabs some trash bags and begins to gather and count all the birds. We've got at least three birds here, I believe, that are whole. We've got a breasted out one here. we got a whole bunch of birds down at the bottom that are breasted out. So we're going to start collecting up some of these birds. This bird here is completely whole. Maggots are working on this one already. This one looks like probably had the breast removed, but you can see the, the maggots in there working on it. So it's been here for a while. Same thing, I mean breast removed, but not the thigh. Montana law requires that the thigh needs to be kept. Not doing a very good job of taking the breast. Nine. Yeah, why not? 
750 miles to the west in Region 2, Captain Jeff Dara has come across a suspicious vehicle. Well, there's a pill bottle with a name on it. Probably a date of birth. Now this vehicle looks really suspicious uh, for a lot of reasons. It's got uh, uh, out-of-state plates on it. Uh, the inside of the rig, kind of just from my experience, it has some things in there that make a guy think that uh, there could be some things wrong here. Um, the uh, area is very, very, very limited to cow elk being harvested. We did check some other hunters down below that said that uh, some hunters were leaving this rig to go pack out a cow elk. Yeah. Between the rig and uh, the out-of-state plates and a cow elk, it, it, it's kind of suspicious. So uh, we're definitely going to check this out just to make sure that everything's on the up and up. I think we'll drive back there. Um, I've got a key to the gate, so we'll go go back and try to cut some time off on this and uh, get a little closer to them. They may not get out till dark. Thing is, you always things like this, your mind kind of goes to what you think it might be, and sometimes it turns out not to even be anywhere close, but it's still not right. Just what will Captain Dara find? Not sure, but the kid is borderline. He may not be 12. He's pretty young looking. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Western Montana has seen a decline in elk numbers over the past several years, which has been largely attributed to higher predator numbers. That includes mountain lions, bears, both grizzly and black bears, and of course, yeah, the wolves. The southern Bitterroot Valley has suffered tremendously, which has resulted in a limited number of cow elk to be harvested. Well, today we were in the 270 hunting district and we were in this uh, moonshine drainage and we saw a vehicle that looked kind of suspicious. Kind of looks like it might be a man and a woman. The windows were open and uh, had an out-of-state plate that was just expired, and so we got what do we got for residency issues, potentially? It's pretty, pretty hard to kill a cow in here, so we got that issue. Maybe transfer of a license. Yeah, there's a high degree for something to be wrong. I think we'll drive back there. Um, I've got a key to the gate, so we'll go, go back and try to cut some time off on this. And uh, get a little closer to them. They may not get out until dark. We uh, went in behind the locked gate and drove the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the same kind of beer that was in the back of the truck. And it's a fairly fresh can. Uh, We're gonna leave that there right now, but we'll pick that up on the way back and I'll bag it and uh, we'll talk to him about it. That looks like a same, it's kind of ironic that it's not a real common beer around here and it's the same as the 12 pack container in the back seat of their vehicle. So uh, that's a littering case right there probably. Back to the east in Glendive, Montana, Warden Steve Marks has contacted a potential suspect believed to have thrown several pheasants and sharp-tailed grouse in a ditch without taking all the meat. Hey, I received a tip about a bunch of breasted out pheasants in the ditch up by the local college here. And when we investigated it, Warden Enders and myself, and they just breasted the birds out, which is a violation of Montana law because they're required to, to keep at least the breast and thigh meat from the birds. A 
Over 60 birds have been collected from this case and all loaded into Warden Mark's truck as evidence. Warden Marks makes an attempt to contact the suspected violator. Okay, I got the answering machine. I may just go up in the dorm here and try and find the um, dorm supervisor and see if he knows that this kid's around. Hello. Is this Hey, see this is Game Warden Steve Marks from Glendive. How are you doing? I'm real good. Say, I was hoping to, to visit with you for a minute. Are you uh, at the dorm or? Both of the suspects agree to meet with the wardens to answer a few questions. They will be separated and interviewed by wardens Marks and Enders. Todd was, Todd was gonna visit with you. He's a warden out of Baker. Okay. And um, see, I'll visit with you for a second, okay? I'd just like to visit with you guys about your hunting a little bit, and about some of the hunting that's going on up here at the college. And, and um, part of my job before I start asking a bunch of questions is I do always have to advise guys in the Miranda warning. Oh, so yes. just so you're aware of that. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning, if you wish one. Do you understand these rights? I do. Hunters or persons in possession of game animals or game birds are prohibited from wasting or rendering unfit for human consumption any part of that game that is defined as suitable for food. Have you done any hunting at all? We have. Okay, what have you What have you done for hunting? Uh, we hunted doves a little bit for a minute, and then uh, hunted some sharpies. Okay. And then uh, we hunted some, well, we hunted pheasants. Okay, how, how have you done? We've done pretty good. Yeah, what have you, uh, or what have you taken for birds then? Just pheasants. How, how many do you know? I mean, can I guess? Yeah, I mean, whatever you think. 20 or so. Okay, so you've done pretty good then. Yeah, we've shot. Okay. Who, who's all hunted with you? Uh, just me and and uh, that's it, I believe. I mean, our coach, he's gone out with us a time or two, but I think just once or twice, I believe. Okay. When you guys get your birds, where do you clean them at? We clean them out here. Just right here? At yeah. At the dorm, or yeah, I know. Like I know when other kids go out, they bring their birds out here too. So we just figure, it's just, okay, it's just, we can do that too. Just clean them right in the parking lot, or yeah, okay. What um, what do you do with carcasses when you get clean the birds? Uh, we throw them away, and then like some kids like, and then sometimes we throw them down in the ditch. Cause we've seen kids do that before too. Okay, we have minimum amounts of the bird that you have to to take home and consume. Like possession and stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, your possession limit is nine birds. But in Montana, you're required to, to eat certain parts of the bird. If you kill a bird, and mm -hmm. with deer, oh, same thing. You gotta okay. eat certain parts of the deer. Now, are you aware of our requirements? I'm not. For birds, okay. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you mean requirements? Well, in Montana, our waste, our, our waste law says that you have to consume the, what's considered the edible portions of the bird. Mm -hmm. And what they consider the edible portions on like a, a grouse or a pheasant, is the um, breast and the thigh meat. Okay. Okay. So you want us to take the legs off too? Yeah, you have to by law. You have to take the thighs. Okay. That's, that's really good to know because I, I honestly, okay. honestly didn't know that. Well, yeah, I mean, we got we got a little bit of an issue, but I mean, you're being you're being honest with me about things, but because we got a bunch of birds down in the ditch and and you know none of them have had thigh meat removed. Okay. And. You said you've taken about 20 birds this year? I would say, yeah. Yeah. Say that. Okay. So it's safe to say that probably about 20 of those are yours? Mine are, yeah. I mean, because I've killed 20. And, okay. But I mean, I, I don't know how many down there. I know some kids throw theirs down there too. 
750 miles to the west in Region 2, Captain Jeff Dara is hot on the trail of a potentially illegally harvested elk. In this district, uh, we only have five cow permits issued. And so the only other people that can kill a cow elk would be uh, a youth 15 or under or a handicapped person with a permit to hunt from a vehicle. Jeff continues driving further up the trail. Well, we found the game part here at the end of the road. I guess we're in the right location. So that tells us that uh, this is where they're gonna pack the meat too, is this game card. And I don't know if there's any meat on it or not. We'll go up there and take a look. I don't see the, the hunters at this time. It's still suspicious um, on what, you know, what, what they're packing out, uh, who shot what, and uh, it's a cow. So we still need to figure out or get to some conclusion here of uh, it's a cow elk, who shot it, and was illegal. We'll follow the trail and see where it leads us. Yeah, we can hear voices down there at the bottom. Sounds like a female voice and, and a, a male. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. There are several unanswered questions today. Region 7 Warden Steve Marks has found a large pile of game birds and has two suspects under oath for questioning. Then in Region 2, Captain Jeff Dara has come across a suspicious vehicle which has led him to travel behind a closed gate to investigate further. We uh, went in behind the locked gate and drove the road to the very end, and at the very end there was a game cart. Well, I guess we'll follow the trail and see where it leads us. Yeah, we can hear voices down there at the bottom. It sounds like a female voice and uh, a male. sitting here at the game cart for a while and uh, we just spotted down here in the bottom uh, a youth. Uh, I could tell through the binoculars he's wearing a hunter safety orange vest that uh, he got from hunter education. That's a good sign. There is a youth hunter there with a rifle. So uh, it's a good sign that uh, potentially the, the cow was harvested legally. Hi, how are you? Good, are you? Good. How come you're breathing so hard? How come you're breathing so hard? Steve, we've been carrying an elk. Oh, who shot the elk? Uh, me. You did? Had about a 550 yard shot. You did? When did you shoot that? Yesterday. Did you? Is your gun unloaded? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. How old are you? 13. 13? You want to make sure your gun's unloaded yeah. for me? Right on. Yeah, it's unloaded. Okay. How many of you are there? Uh, Four? Yeah, five. Five, okay. Yeah, we're packing this big elk. I shot it yesterday, and we just packed it like 10 miles away from this ridge over here. We had to walk down to the draw, come this way. Holy cow. It 10 miles? Big... You'd have been down to the highway. Uh, well, not exactly 10 miles. Uh -huh. over well, it felt like 10 miles anyway. Huh? Yeah, we're packing this elk. <laughs> Uh, I asked him where, where the, why he was breathing so hard, and he said, well, we hiked 10 miles with that elk, and 
Uh, as a crow flies 10 miles, it put him across the Bitterroot River in a whole different hunting district. You only got 40 more yards to go, you'll have her done. <laughs> Easy said, huh? Yeah. Oh. Is that your guys' red and white Dodge then parked yeah. up above there? Oh, okay. Yep. It's got North Dakota plates on it. Somebody just moved here from uh, North Dakota? Oh, we just, uh, we worked out there this summer and bought that truck out there when oh, we were out there. Oh, you were so. working in the oil fields? Or? Uh, we were doing construction out there. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Our friend AJ, he has like a hundred pounds on his back. Okay. Does he really? Yeah, and then he's huh? carrying a head, which is like another Oh, I know. Uh -huh. That's why I dropped that last. Now where's your tail again? Okay. Okay. Uh, mm. I, I left the I left the tag in over the ear overnight, so mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. so people know it's mine. Sure. Yeah. I'll take a look at it. Oh, yeah. bloody. That's good. And he said his sister got one down here too. Yeah. Uh -huh. cool. All right. Brandon. Brandon. Brandon Blackwell. All right. Good job, Brandon. <laughs> it's my uh, it's my first year getting anything. Last year I didn't get anything because I didn't really know where to go. But you say you got a deer already too? Uh, yeah, two days ago, a day before I got my elk. Uh, it was about 175 yards away. I got it right behind the shoulder. Uh -huh. Ran about 20 yards and then it just dropped. Wow, what kind of deer? Uh. Doe, white tail. Doe, white tail. I don't really, I don't really care about the horns or not, and I just want the meat. The meat. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. You bet. Now that we uh, see that the hunters are, are all younger fellas, uh, the first kid that came up was actually the individual that harvested the elk, and uh, uh, he's quite small in stature, but he was still 13 years of age. And uh, so, is that truck belong to one of you fellas? Then? Um, I think Damon. it's Damon's. Oh, okay. Is, is he one of the guys down here? Though? He was the guy that was just up here. He oh, oh, okay. Second one up. Oh, okay. We were looking up here down there. We were all carrying and we saw a truck. We were like, Yeah, I stopped. Oh. I was like, There's a truck in. Yeah. I mean, it's the road's right there. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Light at the end of the tunnel, huh? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. At the end of the tunnel, I was seeing spots, so <laughs> I stopped. You were working pretty hard, yeah. Me and my me and my friend Damon, we didn't think I was gonna get it, but I was just like, you know, I'll take a shot. And I shot, and the wind carried it and hit it right here in the jugular and the neck bone, so it just it just dropped. Dropped instantly. right away. So you only, sh only shot once. Yep, only shot once. What That's caliber? Uh, 270. Oh, good deal. Congratulations. It's kind of cool. We talk about recruitment of young hunters and not having, you know, young hunters that are interested in this kind of stuff anymore and all they want to do is play video games and get in trouble. Them kids ain't playing video games. <laughs> they're, they're working hard. Good job, guys. Hats off to you. How many guys do that anymore? With everything done legally, Captain Jeff Dara has only one little issue to deal with. There's one of you here that's old enough to drink beer. That'd be me. Is that your beer can up yep. on the Okay, now how old are you? I'm 17. Okay. 16. Okay. 23. 18. 13. All right, cool. He's got his tag validated, but once once you get up to the truck, you know, tape it on the leg. Uh, the evidence is set, which is good. Um, it is on there. The udders are still on. Whether you met, did you mean to do that? Cool, you did it right. You did everything right. Because you did do everything right, um, I'm gonna uh, offer you a ride if you wanna ride to the gate. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. The only thing I'm gonna ask is, is, is I'm gonna ask you, and you guys have been super guys, and you've been too, truthful with me, and, and you did a great thing but we got uh, some litter issues, okay? Uh, your granola bars that you had? Oh yeah. Yeah, your wrappers are kind of blowing around, okay? So I just need you to pick those up. All right. All right. And the other thing is, is um, there's one of you here that's old enough to drink beer. That'd be me. Is that your beer can up yep, on the I hill? I was gonna grab it on the way out. Okay. Hello. Hey, Lou. Hey, uh, 
Well, pretty good. Uh, it, uh, it turned out to be a 13-year-old kid clear down here at the end of the road with four, with four of his buddies all in that 15 to 20 year age range and they packed the cow, cow elk out of a hole. They got it up, they got evidence of sex, they got the tag, they got it, they got everything. So we're loading it in the back of the truck and I'm gonna save them a two mile hike out of here. And, and uh, So uh, yeah, no, it, 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 it had all the signs of being something illegal, but uh, actually turned out to be five kids that did it all right. And hats off to them for doing it right. Uh, you know, they, they uh, wasn't a big, big safari or anything like that, but for them, it'll be a hunt that they'll remember for sure. 750 miles to the east in Region 7, Warden Steve Marks and Todd Enders compare stories after questioning suspects. He's admitted that, I mean, they killed all these birds. All he of says, them? He says about 40 of them. He's admitting to killing 20 this season, so well, I'm throwing the, them he, in there. He, so. he said there was, between the two of them, probably they'd killed about 20, 25, and then between his dad and the friend, there was probably another 15 or 20, and then uh, their two coaches have been hunting with him too a couple of times. Have you got anywhere with the deer? He's admitting that he told <laughs> he shot a whitetail buck, but he's saying there's no picture. Okay. What's my, he saying? My guy's saying that nobody shot, he doesn't know of anybody that shot a whitetail buck last year. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was told, that that um, he was showing a picture, picture of a whitetail buck and saying he killed it, and it was just a head. Sure. What's your, yeah. guy, what's your guy saying? He's shooting for a rifle. He says he shoots a 30 out six. So my guy's saying they both shoot they both 30 shoot which doesn't match that head, the headless carcass down here. Right. So this whitetail head was just something they found, is what he's That's saying. what he's saying. Well, we got to get to the bottom of this stuff here, OK? Let's do that. Because and I, I'm giving you your opportunity to be straight and square with me right now about the whitetail buck up towards Sydney. That After a lengthy interview, the real story comes to light. The suspect found a dead deer, severed the head, and took pictures so he could brag to his friends. We found a dead, dead carcass. I'm here to I'm here to tell you there's more to hunt than killing the biggest buck. So I mean don't let that I mean don't let that bother you. I know, but it they just I just hey, hey, what I want to know is whether you messed up and posted deer last year or not. I did not post And I don't after visiting with you, I don't think that you did, okay? That's where we're at. I don't think you killed a deer. I don't either. A warden's workload peaks in hunting season, which makes personal time in the field an absolute luxury. Warden Mike Fegley has drawn a coveted mule deer tag and only one day to hunt. Will he be able to connect with a trophy of a lifetime? You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Ask a game warden what his or her passion is, and hunting is probably on the top of their list. You know, just the opportunities that are here. I mean, to be able to one day, you know, be at a mountain lake and the next day be, uh, you know, looking at world-class mule deer and the next day to be elk hunting. And... With a passion for hunting, Warden Mike Fegley was lucky enough to draw a coveted mule deer tag in a trophy unit of Western Montana. Just like every other hunter, he sent in his application and could only wait for the results of the drawing. Well, I started hunting as a kid, started hunting like most people do with the family. You know, it's kind of a family tradition. Uh, my, my dad went to deer camp and so that was, you know, I was like most kids waiting at the door when he came home to see what was on the the roof of the station wagon, you know, just getting excited about when I got my opportunity. You know, after deer hunting in Pennsylvania and pheasant hunting and goose hunting and rabbit hunting and doing all that, it, it just, just wanted to try new things and up the ante a little bit. Just seeing big mule deer and elk and big country and 
the fact that you're not hunting a woodlot or a small piece of ground where you can get out and you can spend six, eight hours hiking on public ground, open fair chase hunting, uh, there's just nothing like it. One of the bigger challenges when you take on a job as a game warden, uh, especially in standalone districts or small towns or areas where you're real busy throughout hunting season, you know, you worry about losing the ability to go out and hunt. You know, you, you can't take a week off during the general season and go pack into a, a wall tent camp and, and do things like that. So you, you just have to learn to kind of pick around the edges, do it a little differently. Uh, you know, you do get to take your days, you know, a lot of times during the week, so you have a lot less hunting pressure and you just put them together as you can. So yeah, you don't hunt as much, but the trade-off is you're, you know, when you're in the field, you're in the field doing these things every day, uh, seeing the elk, seeing the deer, seeing the hunters, you know, and, and most every warden I know is a sportsman, uh, a big game hunter. They want to be out there doing these things. And it's, it's nice to be on the other end of it, especially with something special like this with a with a permit that is you know a once in a lifetime hunt, a once in a lifetime draw. And you might not have the time to put into it that, that somebody else would, but the enjoyment's still there. It's it's a great pleasure to get out and be on the other side of it once in a while. And see this resource. I mean that we've worked this district hard for years and it's been a real priority of enforcement. You know, we've done everything from you know, asking the Mule Deer Foundation has given us money for decoys and for patrols and all kinds of things. So, you know, that's the resource that we're protecting. That's what we're out here trying to do so that not just us, obviously, but everybody has that opportunity. And so, you know, I got two boys and I want to see them have those same opportunities. And obviously management is a big part of it and enforcement is too. And, and keeping those good genes in the pool and, and keeping those big animals out there long enough that uh, a legal hunter can get a good mature buck. Captain Jeff Darrow will be joining Mike on this hunt. Jeff, you know, obviously same thing when you're working. You work together a lot, but you don't get a lot of time to go out and, and do those sorts of things. So, you know, when you, and, and Jeff, I don't know who was more excited about the tag, me or Jeff, and, and so he was, right from the beginning say, man, I'd really like to go with you. I'd like to be a part of that. That's, that's gonna be a fun hunt. That's part of what I like about having opportunities is when you have that kind of public access and public land, and you can go, I mean, how many, how many people sitting in a tree stand somewhere get to see eight, 10, 12 bucks in a day? Granted, not all big corkers, but just the fact that you can you can go look at that much ground and see that many animals, and it, it's nice to, you know, it, it's a hunt. That's the beauty of fair chase hunting, with open public ground, accessible ground, that you can, you can go out and beat the brush and, and look around and look around. And... Well, we had spotted this deer earlier in the day. Um, he was high on some private ground. We didn't have permission to, to go on and hunt, and we were hoping he'd move down as those does were feeding down towards the, the creek bottom. So we, when we got there, he was in the bottom, and as soon as we started moving on him, he, he just beat feet up the deepest canyon he could get into, and we thought we could get around him. Uh, we, we went kind of just right up the gut because it was getting late, and we knew this was kind of the only chance we had at him. Fortunately for us, that actually worked in our favor because those does went up a different ridge. We thought he was on that ridge, and Jeff spotted him, talking about yardage and you know trying to figure out what where the best place was to take a shot. And fortunately, it took me a couple of minutes because the buck we were looking at wasn't the one that we had seen earlier. It was a, a smaller one. And about that time, when uh, that big guy had got in behind us, he went up a different draw than we thought he was in and he was sneaking off, but then he saw that little buck going after the doe that he had been following. And that kind of got his ire up a little bit, and he came blasting out of the, the canyon after that doe to kick that other buck off. And about that time, Jeff yelled at me, hey, not the first one, not the first one. 
when I saw him, there was no doubt. You knew exactly that it was, that was the year. When he went up there at first, he, he got up high, and I was trying to reposition and, and get to where I could take a shot and get my heart to stop pumping so I could actually get the crosshairs to sit steady. And started moving towards that other doe, and she was moving off. And when he finally came down on the bench, he just he gave me a broadside shot. And I'm going to go ahead and take him. It was, it was a little shaky for a little bit, so I had to take a few breaths. And Jeff was, Jeff was giving me the confidence factor. You can get him. You can make the shot. Western Montana is home to some of the largest mule deer in the U.S and Region 2 Warden Investigator Mike Begley has just shot a trophy of a lifetime. And I was telling Mike to hurry up and get, you know, in position to shoot. And all of a sudden that one come out of the right. And, oh, that's the one there. <laughs> Mike goes, that's a long ways away. I said, ah, just hold it right top of his back. Then I had to, had to run through the bottom of the draw and get up on the, that next ridge to go get him. Hey, Mike, we're going to go to town and get some supper. We'll be back in a little while. We'll meet you down by the bus. <laughs> I had given Jeff my backpack so I could go a little bit lighter, and he went back to the truck and got the game cart. Now we're down here uh, in the Bitterroot Valley today uh, with Mike Fagley and uh, Steve Puppy. And uh, it's game warden day off. Mike had a special mule deer tag for this area, and uh, we've been glassing bucks and we spotted this one uh, this evening and we were lucky enough to get on him and Mike made a great shot, probably, oh, 350 yards probably. Nice buck, Mike. Congratulations. I'm very happy. I kind of like this end of the rifle once in a while. Yeah, it's nice to get out. You kind of forget about the... Uh, the enjoyable parts of being out in the field when you're just running and gunning and it's busy and and the season seems to fly by so just one day out here can man that can make all the difference gets the guy motivated to go back to work and get the guys doing it the wrong way I thought he was gonna get away because that one doe was going towards the fence. I couldn't get my freaking heart to stop. <laughs> I'm going, Mike, you have to take him. He's getting away. He's getting I'm, away. I'm trying to do my combat breathing. <sighs> take a breath, take a breath. And I, those crosshairs were just doing this with every heartbeat. And then finally I got to where they were. <sighs> That's awesome. Back in Region 7, Warden Steve Marks has come to a conclusion with the waste of the game birds. These aren't your guys? <laughs> We, we the, birds we, the birds we kill, we clean. Yeah. Well, somebody killed these. Somebody did, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't be piled up down there like that. We were like, uh, I've noticed a bunch of, I've noticed a few doves like laying out the parking lot stuff too. You know, and then of course we got, you know, the thigh meat not taken. Yeah, I understand the thigh meat stuff. Okay. You guys both shot some of these grouse, right? Yeah, two shots, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think, I think, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to cut you a pretty good break being during college, but still we need to hold you accountable for this, okay? Um, we're going to write you a ticket for each, one each for wasting grouse and one each for wasting pheasants, okay? For wasting a thigh, that, meat? a thigh meat, yeah, okay? Okay. We could write you a ticket for every bird. I know. Uh, do that, I'm going home. My dad's going to see me to work. Okay. Um, and I want you guys, I mean, being we're going to cut your break, I want you guys to tell the other students up here if there is anybody else doing this, I'm spreading the word. What, what needs to be done, okay? Yeah. You guys have any questions about no. any of the laws at all? Sure. Okay. We'll write that up and, and we'll um, be done with this, okay? okay. We did get four individuals to admit to wasting birds and, and having birds in the, in the pile, and we ended up issuing seven counts of waste for wasting um, pheasants and sharp-tailed grouse. Um, one individual wasn't involved in killing any grouse, so we ended up with two counts to three of the individuals and one count of waste to the other individual.